It is Friday, February 16th. Let's talk PlayStation. All right, we got a number of things to discuss, so let's get into this real fast. Actually, a quick PSA about PlayStation VR. Currently, there will be a sale going on from February 18th to March 3rd. Um, about $100 off the retail price of PSVR if you're looking to get into it. So $200 for the GT Sport bundle, $300 for the Doom VFR uh, bundle, and then $350 for the Skyrim VR bundle. These are the This is like the same sale that was from like Black Friday and um, over the holidays. Really good price on VR if you're looking to get into it. $200 is super low even for that GT Sport bundle. So just a little reminder if anybody's interested. Now going into our first actual news story, um, people have noticed this past week that a number of like a lot of people are reporting that they're getting full downloads of Shadow of the Colossus on their PS4 with a little lock symbol. This is called feature content on PS4. This also happened with Destiny 2 when Destiny 2 came out. A lot of people were noticing that the game was being installed on their dashboard. And not just a little bit, not like a little portion of the game, the whole game was being downloaded and installed without the user actually knowing about it and then basically being behind a paywall when they didn't ask for this. This is called featured content on PS4. If this does in fact happen to you and you do not like this practice, which I certainly don't approve of it, um, you can go into system settings and you can basically toggle it off right in there. Very simple stuff. So I really don't like this. This seems very like, I don't like borderline insidious behavior because it's, it, they try to play it off like, oh, it's featured tailored content. We noticed that this is your specific play style or games that you're into. So Sony will occasionally preload games on your system if you might be interested and then you can just hit the buy button right then and there. Um, trying to make it seem convenient for you. I don't really like this practice at all, but if you're not into it either, definitely go and check that box. Because as far as I know, this is the second game that Sony's done this with, which is Shadow of the Colossus. So um, otherwise, they might be doing this even more so in the future. I mean, there, there are times where they've done this with certainly putting up, um, like preloading an image onto the onto the system and then it like links you to the PlayStation Store or something, but this is them downloading the full game. I don't like it at all, and if you don't either, um, just be sure to go ahead and do that. Now, boy oh boy, let's get into my favorite rumor from this past week. Damn, we were just talking about this, and if you do remember, this was a PlayStation prediction by yours truly. So Kotaku UK is reporting from multiple sources, very close to Activision, uh, possibly with Vicarious Visions, that a Spiral remaster is in fact coming. And that is the best part, is that it will be done by Vicarious Visions, the same team that did the Crash Insane, uh, Crash Insane trilogy. Um, we also have a little bit of details that it will pro more than likely be a time exclusive, one year. So it will. the game is actually apparently being slated for uh, being announced next month which seems very soon to me and then being released in the the third quarter probably around september which actually lines up quite nicely with spyro's 20th anniversary so that's probably what they're aiming for right there but this seems to be a pretty surefire thing um hopefully this actually will come to fruition and the announcement will come very soon um i'm at this point i'm fairly confident this will actually happen What's interesting to me is that they're not going to save this for like E3 or something like that, but I guess if the game is going to be releasing soon, I guess they'll just want to announce it right away because clearly the, the cat's out of the bag now. I don't think that they would be able to hold a secret like that much longer, like getting like, you know into June or something, like close to an actual place where they can announce it on stage or something like that, which would make it very cool and, and an impressive announcement. They probably knew this was going to slip at some point, but yes. My god, this is awesome, because really, Vicarious Visions did an amazing job with the Insane Trilogy, and just, oh god, I just, you know how happy I am about this, um, and hey, I was right, uh, I mean, I really was, I thought, you know, they, they gotta be pursuing Spyro at this point, considering how well the Insane Trilogy actually did, Activision must have been pretty pleased with that. Um, and so yeah, uh, this will also probably be a one-year time exclusive like the rumor says, so actually you can also expect the, this possible Spyro remaster to also come to other platforms late into 2019. But awesome stuff there, dude. I'm super happy about it. I just want to, now I want to see it. All right, for our final news story, this one's kind of like long-winded and, and multifaceted, but we'll go through this step-by-step, step. and it's it's actually technically old news, but anyway, here's what, here's what happened. So about a week and a half ago, maybe a little bit longer, um, this guy, Ryan Seymour, on Twitter, I guess sent in a bunch of tips to multiple news outlets, but I'm, you know, I, I see this on PSU. Not many people actually did report this. Um, that he had gotten an email from PlayStation Voice um, asking for his opinion on PlayStation 5 and what they think uh, that what he thinks that it will look like. They want his opinion on specs for the system. And this is, of course, probably an email that goes to multiple people. Um, the idea, actually, is that PlayStation Voice is a, a small subset community of people that can voice their opinions directly to PlayStation. 
or so we think, right? Seems pretty sketchy, doesn't seem very reliable. This news story comes out, doesn't seem like it gets much buzz. Um, even PSU originally discredits it right away, so not really a whole much goes on with that news story, and we kind of forget it. That's why I didn't even bring it up last week. I don't like to talk about, you know, clickbaity news bullshit like that unless there's a little bit of legitimacy and sources to it. So we didn't talk about it. Um, then there's a new email, again from PlayStation Voice being sent out, and a survey being sent out to people, but this time it's about PSN ID name changes, and if people want to see name changes come to PSN. The email specifically says, these are, these are for your eyes only. Um, we didn't, we're not even sure if this will happen, but we want your opinions to be heard. And um, so I guess if you do a little bit of digging, which I did this for myself to confirm, if you go to PlayStationVoice.com, because you can look at the bottom of the email, it says, you know, send concerns or whatever to place at playstationvoice.com so you go to the website um as i check it right now it's currently under maintenance but it's got playstation imagery on there and i mean that's a sh one that's a surefire thing right away to tell you that there's maybe some validity to it because you can't in, in all legal matters you can't actually use that kind of imagery um in a traditional sense because if you don't know actually sony even has trademarks on the playstation buttons and some of the you know it, like it's their ip right they actually do have um, the rights to all that kind of that kind of stuff. So initially it seems legit But if you go to the who is registrant of this um, of this website You can see that it's actually registered under the agency join the dot and if you go to the join the dot website Join the dot is a legitimate agency. It's a real company that actually offers is, uh, offers uh, these kind of services basically where they try to connect a small group of people to major companies and, and get opinions thrown back and forth and whatnot and it's also my understanding that the people in PlayStation Voice uh, have to sign NDAs, not disclosure agreements, so they can't um, talk about, you know, what they're sent, this, that, and the other, and that's how that's that's all well and good. And apparently this Ryan Seymour guy also followed up by saying, oh man, ever since I sent that email in, uh, I basically got booted and kicked right away. But you can see he's got no retweets, no likes, no news outlets are reporting this, so I'm still kind of like super iffy on it but i mean hey if you go to the registrant and if you check the who is if you check playstationvoice.com actually seems like this very may, may very well be a thing but the thing is even if it's not even if this is all still kind of fake manufacturers still start working on their next machines probably usually like a year after their consoles come out so this isn't totally out of the norm uh, the only difference this time with this generation is that we didn't know Sony and Microsoft were doing a mid-cycle update with Xbox One X and PS4 Pro, which is probably something they started working on almost immediately because of the high turnover for them being released only a few years after the original system. But you got to figure right now, absolutely, Sony's looking forward to, to PS5 and and same with Xbox uh, One X and, and Microsoft, what they're going to do after that system. Although they just launched Xbox One X, but still, you now these are multi-billion dollar companies. They're certainly looking forward. I guess it's just interesting because... As far as I know, this is the first official capacity that Sony's ever specifically mentioned PlayStation 5, like said the words PlayStation 5. Because it almost, you know, it almost makes me a little bit nostalgic prior to 2013 when we were talking about Orbis, because that was PS4's code name at the time was PlayStation Orbis. And Sony never in any way, shape, or form said PlayStation 4. The very first time Sony ever said the words PlayStation 4 was when Andrew House was on stage at the February 13th PlayStation meeting, which we all didn't know at the time what the hell that was, but a lot of people were like, oh, this is probably the next generation of consoles, and that was like a thing. It was up in the air. Like, we didn't know what they were going to call it. A lot of speculation was going on that they were going to call it just PlayStation or PlayStation Orbis or not, you know, skip the, the numerical, you know, adding of, of the PlayStation lineup. But no, that was the first time when he said, this is our next generation system, PlayStation 4. That was the first time they ever said it. So for the longest time, we didn't know if they, we'd even call it that. Um, so I just found this to be interesting if this actually does lead to something. What's funny is that if the surveys are real, why the hell are you asking people about PSN ID changes? You know that people want this. Sean Layden even said, hopefully by PSX this year, they will finally have the feature implemented. So God, please tell me that they will have that finally all said and done. Those are just some of the news stories I want to talk about with you guys this week. So just to give you a little update right now, um... March, uh, March 2nd is a Friday, so that'll be a Let's Talk PlayStation, obviously, but March uh, 5th, which will be a Monday, will probably be the first day of brand new uploads. Already got a bunch of videos finally done. They're all edited. They're all, they're ready to go. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoy the stuff I got cooking. So keep in mind, 
probably I'm like 90 99% sure, but March 5th is more than likely will be the start of all the brand new uploads. So get excited, yo. It's about to get real up in here. Really hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, anyway, that concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Benecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me, and I will see you guys next Friday.